Sunny Silverstone welcomes round four of the Lamborghini Blancpain Super Trofeo. It's race two of the weekend. Yesterday's race was a really topsy-turvy one. It was won by Jeroen Mull. And very shortly the cars will be heading onto the grid and then for the green flag lap to get 50 minutes of racing underway. Thankfully today is dry. We had an awful lot of rain yesterday at Silverstone, but the circuit is dry. It is windy. It's pretty cold, it's got to be said here. But as the cars make their way round to the grid, at least the drivers don't have to think about wet conditions as they did yesterday. Qualifying didn't happen virtually at all yesterday because early on, People went off the road, did car and barrier damage, and qualifying was abandoned. And yesterday's race began uh, behind a safety car because of some standing water, but then the race got underway. We lost about 10 racing minutes, effectively, and that hurt the likes of Andrea Amici, who had elected to do the first stint as the quicker of the two drivers. It's the same principle that he adopts today, but hopefully there won't be a safety car period at the start of the race to affect his chances. A number of teams elect to put the quicker driver out second because then if there is a safety car period, uh, your driver is well placed to take advantage of it in that second stint. You don't lose the time that you've gained in the first period. But Amici once again will go first. And the result of yesterday's race is the grid for today. And that means that Jeroen Mull, the Dutchman who has moved from the Porsche Super Cup to Lamborghini Racing for this year, will start on pole position. And Eduardo Piscopo is going to be the man to start alongside. So another very good race in prospect. This is David Addison trackside and down in the pit lane and heading for the grid is Jack Nichols. Great race in prospect as the cars work their way up through Luffield and then head to the grid. This two by two rolling start formation into which the cars will slot. 50 minutes of racing, pit window between 20 and 30, and a pit stop is 80 seconds, 20 seconds of which is the drive time in and out, and 60 seconds at rest. And the reason for a specified time is to equate things between the two driver entries and the soloists. And there is one of the two driver cars. Jan van Eitzel will go first, and Jake Rattenbury, the Brit, will do the other stint in that car that yesterday finished 17th. Fantastic noise these cars make, particularly when they are all let loose from the start en masse, these symphonic sounding Lamborghinis with your own mill, the pole position driver. Giovanni Venturini, who will start third, is another man to watch. It was his first ever race in one of these cars yesterday and he drove very, very well. He lost out a bit on the pit stops. He, he seemed to lose track position. But as the race wore on in the second stint, so he fought back and uh, Giovanni Venturini, I think, will be man to look for in this race. Eduardo Piscopo and Milos Pavlovich lost a bit of ground in the first stint, not much, but a little. And Andrea Palma was really the man who should have won yesterday. He uh, is a soloist. He led after the pit stops, but was deemed to have made a pit stop that was too short of the regulations. Now, if that is the case, you serve a stop go to make up the difference. And his stop go penalty was for the almost farcical amount of half a second. You can't do a stop go for half a second, but that's what he had to stop for. That in itself isn't the issue. The real time is lost driving through the pit lane. And so in the end, he fell down the order. He got back up to fourth, but it was the one that got away really yesterday from Andrea Palma and by rights he should have been the winner but it was a mistake made by him and the team and he paid the price fourth wasn't a bad result in the end uh, the lead battle after the pit stops ended up between your own mull and eduardo piscopo mull was ahead 
but had gone very wide at club corner and thought, hmm, might get a penalty for that. So he gave the place back and then tried to get past Piscopo all over again. In doing so, he applied enough pressure to get a spin out of the Italian and Piscopo ended up in second spot. There is Giovanni Venturini, the man I was talking about a little while ago, as a rookie in the car, first time out. He went well yesterday. He's raced here in GP3. He's raced in Formula Renault 3.5 and the like. Two-litre Formula Renault as well, but new to these sorts of cars and drove well yesterday. Venturini, third in the race, starts third on the grid. The grid is almost formed. I think there's one gap at the back yet. We haven't seen... Taras Podishuk line up. The car you're looking at the back of is that of Cedric Lyman, which retired yesterday. He had a big old off at Stowe. The car was airborne, spinning into the corner, uh, and he got it out of the gravel and rejoined, but abandoned the car uh, at the stadium. So he didn't even get as far as the pit lane, and clearly all was not well. Taras Podishuk's car may have crept through the pit lane for another lap, but as yet, ah, oh yes, there is a gaggle of them, more on the way. He's not got to the grid. But Lima, who's got the very quick Jonathan Cochet as his co-driver and who finished third at Monza, uh, should be a man to watch, but uh, he needs to make some progress early doors. This year, the championship has had the reintroduction of the pro class. There's pro, there's pro-am, there's am, and the pro drivers are those that are, if you like, 30-something at the most career racing drivers, mainly with a good pedigree in junior single-seaters or junior touring cars, like Alberto Cerqui, who's come from superstars, and... Uh, it is the pro drivers that have gone very strongly uh, in the races this year, but they are not completely uh, unstoppable. We'll find that out during the race. Let's rejoin Jack on the grid. Middle of the pack, but what do you think you can do today, Miko? Uh, we had a problem for the car, it's jumping a lot, and uh, I, have a, I had a very uh, uncomfortable drive, uh, feeling to drive, and uh, we dropped enough to race a few, a few places, and uh, we find, found maybe something to the car, and I hope that the car is better. And also these hands are better today and uh, the team is always perfect. So let's hope that we uh, get podium today. And the best of luck. Thanks. There you can see the back of the grid forming up. As we fourth round of the championship. As I was talking about these pro drivers, just to reinforce the point that somebody like Peter Cox, for example, who used to be in this championship and a regular race winner and indeed former champion, he's not eligible. He's too experienced. He's too pro. But people like Pavlovich or Piscopo with a good pedigree in junior single-seater racing, they're exactly what the championship wants. They are uh, drivers that you can aspire to be, but still be competitive against. Cedric Lima, though, finding life at Monza certainly a bit tougher to get onto the pace of that type of driver. And yesterday, really struggled in that first stint, went off the road. So he can't afford to lose too much time. Otherwise, he's going to be in real stride starting, especially as he is for this race at the back of the grid. We lost one car in the qualifying session. It was the one that hit the barrier and brought out the red flag. Roberto De Guanti and Gianfranco Bacalari's car with a lot of damage and therefore not racing. The barriers were repaired quicker than the car could be. So we lost one at the start of the weekend, but we still have 24 cars ready for this second race of the weekend. Let's see how windy it is at Silverstone, but the fans that are here are thankful that it's not as wet as yesterday so too are the marshals because yesterday it was horrendously wet at the start of the day and barely anybody in the free practice session for the gt cars went out at all because there was just no point but today the road is dry and shortly the countdown will take us to the formation lap and then we will be in business your own mull pole position driver who came via the german formula 3 cup into the carrera cup deutschland the porsche super cup and now to Lamborghinis, and drove well yesterday for the race win. Did a very, very good job, given that he's a relative rookie in these sorts of cars. But the pace that he evinced was impressive yesterday. And so as the grid is now formed, and the drivers very shortly will be made ready for the green flag lap, uh, a look further down on the grid shows one or two more quick drivers to keep an eye to, because uh, Matteo Zucchi started last yesterday. In the end, Alberto Viberti is normally quick, but he had a problem that caused the car to cut out early in the race, and he rejoined, but it then happened again, and in the end, he had to struggle home in 18th place. Gerhard Travaza and Sandro Bichel's car also went well to begin with, and then had a drama unseen and fell to 11th at the end. So there are quite a few starting a bit further back on the grid than perhaps their pace really ought to suggest, and expect one or two more drivers to make some progress as this 50-minute race goes on. The Fascination will be the pace of number 11. Fifth yesterday, Andrea Amici dominated his first stint. And because his co-driver, Roberto Tanker, is not as fast, so the car started to lose places in the second stint. 
and yet they've adopted the same principle again. It's a bit like last year, Adrian Zaug and Frederico De Nora were the drivers of a car in a similar situation. Zaug was the quicker, always used to go first, and then in the second stint, De Nora fell away, rather than having the quick driver in that second stint fighting back. And especially if a safety car were to come out, then you really do need the gun driver in at that time. But for Otto Calazzaria Imperiali, Andrea Amici has been nominated as the start driver. And it will be Roberto Tanker who goes second. There you can see down on the grid, things now starting to get ready for the race. The grid is being cleared, the team personnel leaving the grid. Still lots of photographers are down there. And in the huddle of people on the grid is Jack. Pole man, your own mull, uh, after the race win yesterday. Well, uh, same sort of thing today, I imagine. Yeah, well, I have a much better starting position today, so hopefully I can just uh, um, stay ahead at the start and then get into my rhythm and hopefully uh, pull a little bit of a gap. You had the measure on uh, Eduardo Piscopo yesterday, so are you worried about the threat he's going to pose? Well, you know, at the start of a race, anything can happen, so it's always uh, good to take care of, uh, of everybody and and uh, just just see how the, the race pans out. But um, I'm, I feel confident that it could be fast enough, but still have to do it. Brilliant. Well, best of luck. And uh, the grid is pretty much cleared. So back to the commentary box. Good to hear from the drivers on the grid as they get ready for this second race of the weekend. One of the best circuits at the championship visits. It's a calendar that takes them from Mont and then on to Paul Ricard, then to Spa and Nürburgring, all the races supporting the Blanc Pan Endurance Series. And then this year, the final round of the championship will be in Malaysia because the world final introduced last year, where the European, North American and Asian series all get together, will have Thursday, Friday of the weekend, the final European championship round, and then Saturday, Sunday, the world final element. Now, let's have some final thoughts from the grid from Jack. But on pole position, your own Mull, who we've just spoken to, he's looking to get a good start. But Eduardo Piscopo, I think, was a little disappointed with the pace he had yesterday. He's going to be starting in second place on the grid, and uh, he's definitely got a chance as the grid girls now are making their way off. We'll try and not get collected by them. But also, it's worth keeping an eye on Giovanni Venturini here, starting in third spot. And don't forget, further back, we've got Andrea Amici as well, who's going to be a very quick driver. So a huge grid of Lamborghinis about to take to the circuit. So Eduardo Piscopo getting ready for the race, conscious of the opposition and there Giovanni Venturini's white car. The grey and green livery is that of Andrea Palma, who, as I say, really threw away a win yesterday with that pit stop panel. Folco yesterday was the Pro-Am winner and number 11 lines up alongside Roberto Tanker and Andrea Amici. And it's Amici, I think, who is going to be the man to watch in the first stint as he works his way up through the order. Alberto Cech, who starts number six alongside Sebastian Mersham. The next row, Yoshimori, starts 87. The Japanese driver alongside Dimitri Angelbert, who normally goes well around here in GT3 Morgans or uh, Renault Euro Cup Megane cars. Sandro Bichel will start 25. Simone Pellegrinelli in number 31. Three class victories in the AM category. There you can see number 70, Shota Abtzahava, but no Matteo Zucchi, number 16. Now, is that car missing altogether or will it start from the pit lane? Question. Then you've got Andros Josefsson and Manuel Flaminio on the next row of the grid. Car number four there is Jan van Oetzel. Alberto Viberti lines up alongside the next row of the grid. Cyril Limer in number 19. Laurent Jenny's car alongside Tim Richards, new to the championship this year. Karina Lima starts, indeed, is the only driver in 21. Alongside Mikhail Spidoranov, who had a spin at Cops yesterday. And the back of the grid will be Taras Polishuk and then Cedric Lima for company. But no Matteo Zucchi, which is curious. So not sure there's a car still in the pit lane, but we'll have to keep an eye to whether Zucchi joins in at the end of the first run through Cops Corner. There's the grid, it's formed, it's ready to go, and very shortly the engines will fire up, the last engineers will leave the grid, and we will be ready for what should be a dramatic race for sure. Silverstone has always given us drama in Lamborghini Blancpain Super Trofeo. Round four of the championship should be... The engines are fired up, and now as the officials and the marshals and the mechanics leave the grid, we are ready for action. The Lamborghini safety car, pace car as it will be now at the front. They're all on Pirelli rubber and this warming up lap is an opportunity to get some warmth into the tyres ready for the start of the race. So that one 
gap where no Mateo Zucchi can be found. But this is a fabulous site. It's a championship that in the last three years has got stronger and stronger and stronger in terms of the entry, the size, the numbers of cars on the grid, the professionalism of the teams, and indeed the background of the drivers. And whereas a few years ago, maybe people looked down their noses a little bit at this and thought, oh, it's just for gentlemen racers. Well, now, increasingly, people are seeing it uh, as a way for career GT aspirants to get themselves noticed. And the likes of Andrea Amici, a very quick young driver indeed, one to watch for the future. The cars get away now. Never mind whether it's a stepping stone or not, it also delivers damn good racing. So the cars are released, and 50 minutes will be the duration. As I say, on a thankfully dry Silverstone, it's the full Grand Prix circuit. It uses the so-called, these days, national uh, pits and start line, rather than the winged pits. But the configuration of the circuit the same, as there you can see at the back of the grid, Cedric Lima, he has left himself with a lot of work to do here as the cars then work their way up towards Beckett's. Blue car of Simone Pellegrinelli, former bike racer, former Seat racer, very much the man to beat in the amateur division. Remember, pro, pro am, and am. And your own Mull, the man that's on pole position, yesterday's winner in the Automobili Lamborghini Racing Team Germany entry, is very much a pro. Let's have a look at the grid based on the results of yesterday. Your own Mull starts on pole position. Eduardo Piscopo will line up alongside in the second row of the grid. Giovanni Venturini and Andrea Palma for company. The third row, Alberto Di Falco, and to line up alongside him, Andrea Amici, one to watch in the first stint. Row four, Alberto Cerqui, former Superstars racer, and Sebastian Mercer, the Ecuadorian, making his debut in the championship. Row five is Yoshi Mori, the Japanese driver, the Asian champion, alongside Dimitri Angelbert. And then Sandro Vicale starts on row six, alongside the best of the Ams, Simone Pellegrinelli. Shota Antakama comes next, the gap where there is no Matteo Zucchi. The eighth row has Anders Josefsson to line up alongside Manuel Flaminio. Then Jan van Eitzel, the Dutch driver, lines up alongside a troubled man of yesterday, Alberto Di Berti. They are ahead of Cyril Lima and newcomer this year, Tim Richards. Karina Lima is going to start 21st in number 21 alongside Mikhail Spidoronov. And then Taras Polishuk and Cedric Lima will round out the grid. That's how they line up. It's going to be, of course, a rolling start, so they don't stop on the grid. They go straight into the race. As they come past the imposing wing, everybody weaving around to put some warmth into the tyres. Pellegrinelli, three victories in the AM class. Pro AM honours yesterday went the way of Alberto Di Falco. This is a look with Sandro Piquel, who starts 11th on the grid. What Silverstone is like as he weaves his way up towards Village, still trying to put warmth into the rubber. Turn through the right-hander, burst of acceleration up that very, very short run towards the loop. Hard on the brake, turn left, road almost doubles back on itself and then opens up as they go uh, through Aintree onto Wellington Strait. So the front row drivers, your own Merlin and Eduardo Piscopo, now starting to drop away from the safety car, bunch everybody up. And of course, what the pole man wants to do is once everybody is with him and the safety car peels into the pit lane is to accelerate, try and get the drop if he can on the opposition. Your own Mull then gets his pace to a happy one, puts now Piscopo alongside him. The second row, the white car of Giovanni Venturini could well be one to watch, I think, over the first few laps. But look at the grey car that will start sixth in the hands of Andrea Ramici as the field now powers its way out of Woodcock Corner, the fourth round of the Lamborghini Blancpain Super Trofeo is about to get underway because the lights will go out, the race to get underway. Now then, as they power past the pits, the race is on and Piscopo makes a good start to try to move across on your own Mull, who has the inside line diving into Cops Corner. Mull will grab the lead, I think, and Amici goes with them on the inside line there. Andrea Amici second as they come through Cops, a great start. Mull will lead up towards Beckett, but Andrea Amici from sixth right with him as you ride with Sandro Bickel now in number 25, the... GRT Grassa Racing Car, it is just your own Mull hanging on to the advantage, but Andrea Amici taking the battle to him, and Amici knows he's got to get the lead and try and build a lead early on. Piscopo is the surprise, he's gone back down to fourth place behind Giovanni Venturini as their number eight runs a little bit wide. That's Manuel Flaminio's car coming on to Hangar Straight for the first time. Down they come. Lights are flashing from Amici. Well, that's a bit cheeky because he's got to work for this race lead. He can't be gifted it. And that's Andrea Palma having a look at the inside of this contact. Piscopo spins. Palma goes all over the grass on the inside. 
he gets away with it just about, I think, but Eduardo Piscopo tagged into a moment. They're three wide almost as they drop down to the end of Vale with Dimitri Angelbert trying to gain ground on the inside line there. Have they all survived the rigours of the first lap? Flaminio's yellow car up onto the kerb. Your own Merle it is leading the way. In second spot then is Andrea Amici. Third is Giovanni Venturini and then a big gap created after the drama up at Stowe Corner. That's going to bring Varvarusis, I think, up into fourth place, or the Varvarusis car with Sebastian Mershon at the wheel of it, as you're riding now with Sandro Bicel. Ahead of him is Simone Pellegrinelli in that very attractive blue car, which is about to lose a place, because up on the inside goes Bicel. Somebody's run way wide and spins, indeed, up at the loop. Trying to identify who it is, but the cars, in the meantime, make the run down towards the end of the lap and the spin was Alberto Di Folco who got it all wrong these are the leaders Andrea Amici challenges on the inside line that are trying to go through Alberto Di Folco after his spin will rejoin this is the view of Sandro Bichel who comes diving up on the inside line to get past Viberti and also to make a move on Alberto Cerqui and he's gone through that was really bold stuff by Sandro Bichel there two places gained forces his way up the inside the road opened up ahead of him as the leaders come across the line at the end of lap one your own Mull is ahead of Amici third is Venturini and then in fourth place going through is Dimitri Angel. There he is, number 77. In fifth place is the recovering Andrea Palmer. And then in sixth spot, Sandro Bickel as the cars work their way through Cops Corner for the second time. Now, where is Eduardo Piscopo? He's not got going yet, I don't think. The contact between Piscopo and Palmer is under investigation. But I'm waiting for Eduardo Piscopo to come across the timing line if he is so able. He has done so, down in 20th place. So the race leader. He's 22, your own Mull, ahead of Amici, ahead of Venturini. But contact on that first lap at Stowe between Andrea Palmer and Eduardo Piscopo. Puts Piscopo down to 20th, Palmer down to 5th, and the stewards want to have a look at it. The cars turn their way through. There is number 47, Alberto Viberti, in 8th place at the moment. Dimitri Angelbert, incidentally, who is 4th, going strongly, is the man that currently leads the Pro-Am class. But up front, your own Mull was only 0.7 of a second ahead at the end of the opening lap. Andrea Amici going with him, as you might expect. Amici is a very quick, more experienced driver, and he makes a move, does he? This is, in fact, for second spot as they work their way towards farm. That's Venturini, rather more aggressive against Amici now, and looking for second place. So your own Mull gapping the opposition. Up they come towards Village. On the outside line is Venturini. And Andrea Amici's plan is unravelling here. Not only is he not leading, he's not even with the race leader, and he might even lose second place. Coming through Aintree, second and third together, and what was 0.7 of a second last time between Mull and Amici is very, very much bigger now. Andrea Amici is having to defend for all he's worth, because if he loses another place, then his chances of a podium finish even have gone, I think, because Tanker can't match his pace in the second stint. And Amici here is losing out as Bickel dives up the inside to gain another place. That, I think, was Palmer he got past coming down towards Brooklands. Sandro Bickel is absolutely flying. It is indeed Andrea Palmer, so he's put himself now up into fifth place. Next target, Dimitri Angelbert. But Sandro Bickel, who lost out in the second stint yesterday, he had a moment and fell down the order. The car caught fire in the second race at Monza. He really does want a good result, and he's going strongly now. Fifth as he comes over the line. Your own Mulvo from seven tenths up leads by 3.2 seconds. Amici second, Venturini third, then it's Angelbert and Bickel, and those are the top two in the Pro-Am category within sixth place, Andrea Palma, who is not really responding, is he? He's lost ground again, so I just wonder whether all is well with his car after that little tap against Eduardo Piscopo. No more news as yet of, to the outcome of the investigation between those two drivers. There in 47 is Alberto Viberti, who started 18th on the grid. He's already eighth, so Viberti proving that he's got the speed assuming the car is prepared to play, which yesterday it definitely was not. Alberto Cerqui, just ahead of Alberto Viberti here as they work their way around Stoke Corner. Alberto Cerqui, who was always a front-runner in Superstars, the Italian-based V8 Touring Car Series. And with that championship rather weaker these days, he's made the move to a GT car for this season. There, 47, accelerating his way out of Club Corner. Alberto Viberti trying to get himself in the mix now as the cars accelerate towards club behind them in the blue livery. Simone Pellegrinelli still looking good for perhaps another class victory, but there Viberti, former kart racer, Clio racer, Ginetta racer, Swiss Formula Renault championship racer, pounds on, inching up onto the back of Cerqui. 
who goes a little bit deep into the corner, up the inside, tries to go the Alberti, but Czechby just able to cover the line, but not anymore perhaps, because to the inside line again goes Alberto Alberti, he's got the inside line, but not fully alongside, so he can't really make the move stick. Czechby coming out of entry, hangs onto the place, way wide over the curve they both go. Again, down to Brooklands comes the leading pack with your own Mull now doing his best to get away from the opposition. Andrea Amici still running in second against Giovanni Venturini in third place. Up to Luffield, the cars now work their way. 47, Alberto Viberti turns his way towards Woodcut Corner. Through they come. Past the pits and down once more towards Cops. Now the bright yellow car is currently 11th, Manuel Flaminio, and that's Cedric Lima from the back of the grid who attacks Sebastian Mershan, and off they go! That's at Cops, Mershan into the gravel, and the red car of Cedric Lima limps through the corner. In fact, Andres Josefsson's car is the one that's been tagged, another of the Bernaldi squad. Cedric Lima made that move on the inside, and I think that was a bit brave. And Andros Josefsson, apologies, is the one in the gravel bed. It's the Bonaldi car. Here's the replay. So Lima dives up the inside, tries to make a move. Bang. I think he has a case to answer there. Round goes Andros Josefsson into the gravel. And that brings out a yellow flag at Cops Corner. And I wonder if that's going to be investigated as well as Cherqui still fends off. Alberto Viberti, who hits the kerb, gets sideways, tries to save it, but off he goes with lots of tar smoke on the inside of the corner. That's at club, and Alberto Viberti has a wild old ride. Sorts himself out, gets it back in the right direction, but Alberto Viberti, funny moment that. It was certainly unexpected as he came through the corner. Let's have another look at it, see what he did wrong. Does he whack the kerb? Yes. And that unsettles him enough as he was applying the power to just lose the back, lose traction, and round he went. And on that grass that's slippery, lucky it wasn't even worse. The contact between Lima and Josefsson is under investigation. Cedric Lima's car is out anyway because for the second race in a row it is going to be parked trackside. So this has been a really grim weekend for the former champion, Cedric Lima. Two races, two retirements. Poor old Jonathan Cochet never gets to race the car. Barely did any laps in qualifying. Didn't do much in free practice because that's when you give the man that pays the bills the track time. So Cochet's had a really wasted weekend in the UK. But up front, your own Mull leads by 2.7 seconds. His weekend very definitely not wasted because he's leading at the moment and looking strong. Race leaders work their way through Luffield and then over the timing line. Shuffles lower down the order. Your own ball's advantage, and there he is, 2.7 seconds. But the Dutchman worked his way yet again onto Hanger Straight. Through he comes, being pursued by Andrea Amici. Driving standards flag is being shown, by the way, for Amici in that second place. And for third is Venturini. Now, is Amici closing? Yes, a little. Not massively, but a little for the race lead. Venturini third. Angelbert still fourth ahead of Bickel, one and two in pro. And there, Andrea Palma coming towards us in sixth. And Alberto Cerqui, seventh, getting closer with eighth, Pellegrinelli. It's a good little fight lower down the order. Jan van Oitzel comes through ahead of the recovering Eduardo Piscopo. Piscopo goes around the outside there. Makes his way down the hangar straight, heading to Stowe. Into the braking area they come there together. But Piscopo ahead of Jan van Oitzel now up into 14th place. Matteo Zucchi, incidentally, is 13th, so he has joined in, he's joined in late, he's joined in from the pit lane, and he's now working his way up through the order. We've lost Tim Richards somewhere, he has not yet come through at the end of the previous lap, but we have your own Mull dominating proceedings. Just wonder what further progress Zucchi can make, he's 13th now, there should be some more places to be gained by the end of the race as the leader, Jerome Mull, drops down to Brooklands. He lost ground in sector one, he lost a little bit of ground in sector two as well. Your own ball, 2.2 seconds to the good. Andrea Amici in second spot, and then 
Giovanni Venturini still third as the teams watch on from the pit lane. Angelbert and Bickel fourth and fifth. And then for sixth place, Andrea Palmer. That's the order at the moment. And Palmer's last lap was a 2.8. He's falling away from those ahead. So Palmer still think may have a little bit of damage, a legacy of that first lap against Eduardo Piscopo, who is now up into 16th place. A safety car in the second stint would certainly save the Bonaldi car, Episcopo and Pavlovich. Race leader onto the hangar straight once again. The gap 2.2 seconds last time. Jerome Mull turns out of Stowe, down through Vale. And in the first sector, on this lap, in fact, he's gained ground over Andrea Amici. So, although Amici, we know he's good in these cars, your own Mull has certainly risen to the occasion this weekend. I know it's a circuit he's raced at before, but the same was true of Monza, because the Super Cup has gone there. Out of club corner comes Mull. Amici second. Now, this other little battle that's developing nicely here, number 19 is Cyril Lima returning to the championship. He is in... 16th place and behind is number 33 which this is Sebastian Mershon who lost a lot of ground early on in the race and Mershon is making a move on the inside the Ecuadorian goes through does he yes makes it stick as he goes into the corner so that is the change for 16th place and off the road there is Yoshi Mori's car by the look of it that's coming out of entry looks like he's got it wrong coming wide over the painted kerb, the wet kerb, the wet grass, and then a tank slapper has put him into the wall down Wellington Strait. But that looks like 87 Yoshi Mori's car that's now out of the race. I should be okay, I would have thought, to live there. As here is number 90, which gains ground coming up towards Village. Alberto Di Folco. Eduardo Piscopo is on the back of this little group now because he's caught up onto the tail of Matteo Zucchi. There's the leader, Jerome Mull goes through, being pursued vigorously by Andrea Amici. There's Venturini in third spot. Big gap back to Dimitri Angelbert, who is there in fourth. And then Sandro Bichel running in fifth spot. Sixth still is Andrea Palma. Now we're not that far away from the pit window opening, six and three quarter minutes or so. It's only open for 10 minutes and everybody must serve an 80 second pit stop and they've got to get it right as was evinced yesterday. Even if you're short by tenths of a second, you have to make the stop go to make up the difference. On his own, down at the end of the hangar straight is your own Mull, 3.8 seconds ahead now and Andrea Amici looking a bit underwhelming in this race. I know he's second but the former champion is really struggling to do anything about the race leader and his co-driver Roberto Tanker is set to fall further down the field, I would have thought, in that second stint. Through turns number six. Alberto Cerqui runs in seventh place. Andrea Ciccato will take over that car. And there is the charging Venturini working his way through traffic, just putting a lap on Tim Richards in the red and white car. The Team UK car run by MTech, Mike Edmonds' team. That's indeed Mike was the co-driver of that car at Monza. Now, Dimitri Angelbert, number 77, leading the Pro-Am category, is lapping a little bit quicker than the two ahead. He's now closing on this man, Giovanni Venturini. The gap, therefore, is coming down slightly between third and fourth. Angelbert will give way to Mikko Eskilinen for the second stint. He's not as quick as Angelbert. Potentially, therefore, that car will drop away, but it's real opposition. It's not Venturini ahead. It is Sandro Bickel, who shares with Gerhard Travazza, who is behind. And that's going to be the battle for Pro-Am honours. There you can see some more lappery taking place down towards Brooklyn. Thirty-five minutes of the fifty. Still to run here at Silverstone. And up front, your own Mull crosses the timing line. He's done just under 15 minutes of the race, but he went past the pits. And he's 3.4 seconds ahead. His last lap was a 2.87. Slightly quicker was Amici. Now here comes Andrea Palma who has got Alberto Cerqui right up behind him. Cerqui perhaps close enough to make a move going down to Cops. This time he runs way wide over the kerb, coming out of Woodcut Corner. As yet, we've not had too much concern about track limits in this race, but things like that will start to alert the officials, that's for sure, as up through Cops Corner go the cars that are fighting for sixth and seventh places. They lapped him Richards in the process, and in doing so, Palmer has just pulled away ever so slightly further. There in the pits is number 34, which is Andres Josefsson in the car that he shares with the pseudonym Dal Pato. And Bernaldi Motorsport, the team, tries to effect repairs to get the car back into the race, but it would have lost a lot of time. It's been pulled out of the gravel, and of course it's had a slow lap into the pit lane. 
down to Stowe comes this fight for sixth. Palmer versus Cherqui. And there, as ever, leading the AM class is Simone Pellegrinelli. Three wins out of three races. He's the dominant driver in the DT Motorsport car, the former uh, Seat front runner. And Simone Pellegrinelli, new to the championship this year as well, Pellegrinelli. Uh, belying his lack of experience of these cars. He's a class act and he's running in eighth place overall as well. And a spin behind, Shadrabska Carver has lost it, coming down to the end of Vale. And thankfully, he doesn't collect Tim Richards. And thankfully, Abkazava keeps it out of the gravel as well. So Shota Abkazava, the Russian team owner, circuit owner, racer, promoter, impresario of Russian motorsport, will get going hopefully because that's in an awkward place if he stalled it at the end of Vale. Looks like locked up under braking. He does get going now. And he was second in class behind Pellegrinelli. And now he'll have dropped quite a chunk of time. So that helps the Italian driver even more. Here's the replay. Pellegrinelli turns in. Look for something green that's going the wrong way. And that was Abkazava spinning into shot. And Tim Richards had the mother and father of all scares there. Kept out of the way. And everybody continues in the race as 22 comes over the line. Your own Mull. We are three minutes or so away from the pit window opening. For a soloist, it doesn't particularly matter when you make the stop. For Amici, who's got a slower co-driver, he needs to come in as close to the end of the window as he can do. In third place, Venturini is a soloist. Fourth, Angel Bear. He is quicker than his co-driver. Fifth, Sandro Bickel. He and Gerhard Travalza are pretty evenly matched, actually. And then Andrea Palmer, sixth. He's another soloist. Seventh is Cherqui who has a quick co-driver in Andrea Ciccato. Eighth, Pellegrinelli, you've just seen him. Now, ninth, there is Manuel Flaminio, who has just taken second in the AM class. Up to 10th is Viberti. 11th is Di Folco. Up to 12th now, Eduardo Piscopo. 13th is Matteo Zucchi. And in 14th place should be, if and when he gets over the line. There he is, Shota Abkazava comes through now. So uh, it cost him a number of places. He was ninth, he's now in at 14th as he comes over the timing line. 15th is Jan van Eitzel and in 16th is number 33 which is the Sebastian Merchant car much further down than you might have anticipated. I think Aristoteles Varvarousis will have to do the hard work in the second stint. There's Karina Lima in 20th behind Taras Polishuk. New to the championship this year, Karina Lima and the race leader which is your own Mull now working his way through the traffic. Five is Sandro Bickel, fifth overall, and the GRT Grassa Racing Team car heads up towards the loop. This car currently running in fifth place, and we are a minute and ten away from the pit window opening. So, for some of the drivers going over the timing line now, they will be trying to time this so they can make the pit stop at the end of the next lap. On board with Sandro Bickel, past Yoshi Morris' stricken car, down to Brooklyn. Second gear through Luffield. It's a long, 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 long corner. Now the road opens up ahead. Up through the gears goes Bickel. Lines it up for Woodcut, and then he'll flash past the pits. Now to the Beckett's S is one of the best parts of the circuit. Uses a big chunk of kerb on the way in. Keeps away from the kerb in the middle. Closing on the car ahead. Sandro Bickel dropped it down a gear for the last part of Beckett's. Through Chapel Curve and now onto the hangar straight. He heads off down towards Stowe. Pit window is opened in the meantime. And your own Mill, the race leader, is currently on lap 10. Through the traffic goes Sandro Bickel. And with a pit window opening, the first one in has been from 16th place Jan van Eitzel to give way to Jake Rattenbury. Down to the end of Vale goes Sandro Bickel. Now when will he make the stop to Gerhard Trevazer, I wonder? Coming through club corner now, past the wing. Runs it up onto the kerb on the outside of the road under the lighting gantry. And then towards Abbey, which these days you don't go left for, you turn right. Left at farm. Over the brow 
and then stand on the brakes, turn right at Village and up towards the loop. Into the pits come more of them. Jan van Oitz, I told you about. I think Taras Polishuk is the next in. Slows it right down. Does Polishuk as he gets to the white line. That's the pit in mark. So 80 seconds they have got to be in the pit lane for. And at rest for 60 seconds for the mandatory driver change or mandatory timed stop, depending on whether you're a one or two driver entry. Race leader through, your own mull. 1.8 seconds ahead of Andrea Amici. The gap has come down a little bit, but Amici has really not done that impressive a job of going after the Dutchman, given his pace last year. In comes now Sandro Bickel. Third is still Venturini. Fourth is Dimitri Angelbert. And Sandro Bickel, having done a good job, brings the car in nice and early to give way to Gerhard Varaza. Door opens. Belt's undone. Intercom unplugged, co-driver out, belt moved aside. In gets Trevaza. Co-driver hasn't done yet because he's got to do the belts up to help his man. And also in has come Andrea Palma, also in early. In fact, Eduardo Piscopo, there he is. And we've had Matteo Zucchi come in, so Piscopo out, Pavlovich in. Wriggles through the cage. There you can see Gerhard Travalza getting ready to rejoin the race, or the car to rejoin. Travalza to join in for the first time. Having started yesterday, he finishes today. Fires up the engine. And in a moment, that car will rumble its way down the pit lane. The two Austrians in the Austrian team, Grasser Racing Team, GRT. Away goes Gerhard Travalza. And as long as that was good at 60 seconds, then hopefully they've got it right so that he will be 80 seconds on the mark for the pit stop. There is Pavlovich ready to go. And that car serves the mandatory stop. Everybody has to make one. Driving standards flag incidentally being given to uh, Matteo Zucchi at the moment as the race leader, Jeroen Mull, continues on his way up front, still the dominant man. Andrea Amici, 1.8 seconds back. Go, 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 that's Zucchi even though he's in the pits, there's still a driving standards flag being made ready for him. And here, your own Mull makes his way out of Woodcut, stays out for another lap. Whereas Giovanni Venturini comes in. So this is the man that was third. What about Andrea Amici? He has gone across the timing line, 1.8 seconds back. Last time fractionally quicker, fractionally quicker than the race leader. So Venturini comes in. The team is ready for him. The team in question being the Eurotech Engineering SRL squad and the mechanics are there to check tyre pressures and to time the pit stop. There shouldn't really be anything else they need to do to the car. Venturini sits there, waiting for the time to elapse. And now that Gerhard Travalza is on track, let's see where he's going to slot in after all the pit stops have been cycled through. Next one in is Alberto Viberti. So his Autocarrozzeria Imperiale car stops. And that's another solo entry. So Alberto Viberti sits and waits. The pit lane at this 10 minute interval. Very busy indeed as in comes the Bernaldi Motorsport car for Sebastian Merchant to give way now to Aristoteles Varvarousis. The front of Vivetti's car looking very scruffy. There's Giovanni Venturini, who's got a problem. He's been there for a long time, hasn't he? So Venturini's car up on its jacks. Change of tyre. Drop it down now. Now that might, or that could have lost time in this pit stop, this might be to its advantage because if Venturini has got a new tyre on and has the confidence to push harder in the second stint, then that could be useful in a spin look coming out of Luffield. Number 79, which is Mikhail Spidoronov, has had a rotation. He gets back into the race, but Spidoronov, who was in the gravel at Cops yesterday, has another drama in this race and continues. So race leader is still your own mill. To the pit lane he comes. So the race leader comes in. The team is ready to receive him. And that gives Andrea Ramici the lead. Andrea Ramici will stay out for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. 
to the pit lane number six, which is Alberto Cerqui, who was up into fifth place. He will give way to Andrea Ciccato now. And meantime, Milos Pavlovich is absolutely flying, as he needs to, because, of course, that car lost a big chunk of time early in the race when uh, Pavlovich was watching his co-driver Piscopo get tagged into the spin, from which the car really did lose a huge amount of time. Andrea Palmer, who was also involved in that, is currently in 14th place, still ahead of Pavlovich. There, number 79, is Mikhail Spidoronov after his most recent moment. 22, your own Mull then has lost the lead on track at least. And is that going to have a tyre change? The tyres were there, but I'm not convinced they've been needed. Your own Mull fires up the engine. And the team counts him down. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. Andrea Amici, the race leader, is going to have to come in pretty soon. He's got three more minutes before the end of the window. Down the pit lane goes Jeroen Mull as this little battle develops on track now between 16, which is Matteo Zucchi. There behind in number 11 is Andrea Amici. So a battle in terms only of one car trying not to be lapped. Matteo Zucchi is mainly pit stop. Right, there is Jeroen Mull back on track, but it's really where this car is relatively to number 11 after the pit stops that is of interest because that will be the outcome for the lead battle. Down hangar straight comes your own mill. But even so, he has got a better pace than Roberto Tanker and Vince yesterday. So even if Amici's car comes out ahead, I still think Mull could well be on for a second win of the weekend. It depends a little bit on who is behind him and certainly where and at what pace Pavlovich is running in the second stint once all the pit stops have cycled through. Tim Richards pits. Shota Abkazava has pitted. Dimitri Angelbert is in. And, of course, Andrea Amici, the race leader, is now in as well. So Amici gets out. Roberto Tanka will get in there, heading down the pit lane, Dimitri Angelbert. 79 is Mikhail Spidoronov, serving his regulation stop. And we've got a minute and three quarters of the pit window still to go. The race leaders working their way there now from... Stowe through Vale. Your own Mull ahead of Andrea Ciccato is the best two that have made a pit stop. There, Roberto Tanka getting ready to take over, but it's where this car blends back in relative to your own Mull that we need to see. It never got ahead, of course, in the race, so I'm doubting it will be ahead on pit stops. Shouldn't be, uh, because if uh, it is, then you can start to get worried about the relative pit stop times. There, coming down towards Brooklands, is number 22, is your own Mull, who should go back into the lead. Now, the team manager of number three, the Pavlovich Piscopo car, being summoned to race control. That tends to suggest the penalty comes soon after. So there's a big question mark over number three at the moment as 22 comes through. Over the timing line now goes your own Mull, who should now go back into the lead of the race. But it's what goes on behind him that's going to be interesting now with cars running out of sequence a little bit on the pit stops. Roberto Tanker joins the race, but loses out. Your own ball goes through. Spidoronov also there back into the race as he comes up towards Beckett's. So it was Amici who led into the pits. There is Spidoronov who we can ignore because he is a lap down anyway, the am. But for the overall race lead, your own ball just looking so, so strong at the moment. Can anybody stop him? Who is the opposition going to be? Because behind him, there is a charging Gerhard Trevaza, but that car was a long way back in the first stint anyway. So really, the only car that was close was number 11. And that won't go as quickly in the second stint. Tanka not as quick as Amici. So your own Mull is in the box seat here. Tim Richards emerges from club corner. Down in 21st place at the moment. more battles, I think, in the Pro-Am category to shake out of this before the very end. There's Roberto Tanker then into the race, given a car, given a task. Don't lose places. Try and stay with the race leader, your own world, if possible. Down towards Village, he comes, and he carries too much speed in and locks up and scrabbles out wide. So you see another of the problems for the gentleman racers of doing the second stint. They're given a car that's already got 
hot and perhaps tired tyres and brakes. They are told to push on into the race as best they can, but they have to be on the money straight away. They can't really afford themselves a lap or two to get into a rhythm, whereas the pro drivers can do that far more easily, and that is another reason why teams will run them second. There is your own Mull. You can see his advantage now, well clear of Tanker. Your own Mull well into his stint, coming up towards the line. He knows exactly what the car is doing, what the track is doing. He's going to take some stopping in this race as your own Mull now comes over the timing line and heads off once more down towards Cops Corner. We've got 18 and a half minutes of the race to go. There's Taras Polishuk, a lap down 18th. For second place, it is Tanker, but I think now the real question is what's going to happen for second place before the end because Roberto Tanker is going to be caught by some of those behind and lose places like we saw yesterday. So heading through the Beckett S's, Roberto Tanker in number 11, his first flying lap he is on now. So it's only at the end of this that we'll get a proper idea of his pace. But your own Mull has really been the dominant driver this weekend. It's a surprise in some ways that Piscopo and Pavlovich aren't doing better because both drivers are quick in their own right, but there's just something that race by race seems to go against them. Yesterday, the car lost pace in the first stint, surprisingly, never really was able to recover from that. It was helped in part that it was racing for the lead by Andrea Palmer's pit stop penalty. Now, Palmer is down in eighth place. Still that car. He's not looking strong enough, and I'm still convinced it's got some damage based on yesterday. The team manager of number three, the... Milos Pavlovich car still being summoned to race control but a stop go penalty for Tim Richards for the pit stop time being too short so we've not been told what the stop time is but a stop go comes for Tim Richards frustratingly he's a long way down the order anyway but rules are rules but something may still be happening about number three the message about the team manager to race control has gone from the screen so one well, assumes he's got there now we'll find out hopefully what it's all about. There's your own Mull then, who's on target for a second win of the weekend. He drove well in race two at Monza, but didn't really shine at all in the first. He's going much, much better here this weekend as they're off the road. At the loop goes Tim Richards. So it's all going against him on this lap. He's been given a penalty, he's had a mistake, and number 28 pounds down now towards Brooklands, passing the stricken car of Yoshi Mori. 16 and three quarter minutes of the race remain. Through Brooklands comes the top six gaggle with Mikael Eskilinen running in third in the car that Dimitri Angerbert started and leading Pro-Am, but Gerhard Travalza is hunting him down. And Travalza, I think, number 25, will be the next one to watch. So there's Eskilinen in the mad crop car, third. But it's the one behind him that's the one to watch because the class lead, I think, is going to change before the end. Through has gone Eskilinen. Drama at Cops. Somebody's had a moment. It is Spidoronov who went off there yesterday. Mikhail Spidoronov has had a spin and thankfully he's off the road and he's also able to rejoin. He's not in the gravel, so he fires up the engine, selects first gear on the paddle shift. It's not that easy to hook it in. You've got to go up and down the whole sequence and then accelerate away. So Spidoronov rejoins. And back into the race he will go now, hopefully. Ah, except it then grinds to a halt and has Spidoronov got a problem. Maybe it was something electrical that caused the spin and therefore he can't rejoin as a consequence. Giovanni Venturini, after what looked to be a slow stop, is now up into fifth place at the expense of Andrea Ciccato. Milos Pavlovic is running seventh but 35 seconds behind the race leader, so a victory for that car ain't going to come. But the man to watch, I think, now is Travaza, who is lapping quicker than the two ahead of him. So he's fourth, number 25, Gerhard Travaza, and he's closing on those ahead. So he could be on for second place before the end of the race. Andrea Palmer is under attack at the end of Vale and leaves the door wide open. Alberto Viberti goes past. It still looks as though Andrea Palmer has got problems with that car. It has been very undercooked in this race. Nowhere near as quick as yesterday. And Andrea Palmer's weekend at Silverstone has not been a great one. Turns his way up now through Abbey. But there was just no real fight there, was there, at the end of Vale, as though he knew that he had a hobbled car, couldn't do much about it. And rather than cause a drama, just let Alberto Viberti go through. He's now coming under attack as well. Alberto Di Falco is trying to close up on him. Race leaders work their way for the... 17th time in the case of your own Mull through Cops Corner. He's gone over the timing line 
and we have 14 minutes to go as you look at the AM class leader, Simone Pellegrinelli, who really has been, I know I keep saying it, the dominant driver this year. Nobody else has had a look in. And Pellegrinelli, who is new to the championship as well, has driven fantastically at Monza and here and is very much the benchmark driver. Humbling as well, of course, many of the Pro-Am drivers uh, on the way to a class win. Tim Richards peels to the pit lane, look, ready for his stop-go penalty. And the lead gap, your own mill to Roberto Tanker, 17 seconds. Tanker is being caught, is he, by Eskillinen? Not by much. And then Gerhard Travalza, who is lapping quicker than the two ahead. So Travalza, number 25, for second before the end of the race. Tim Richards has done the stopping. Now he needs to do the going. Gets away. So I think he was expecting a much longer stop than that, but he gets away now. So there's the leader, your own Mull, working his way once more up towards Village. And as I say, the man to watch lower down is Travalza, running in fourth place because he's lapping quicker than the two ahead of him. He's got to find effectively seven and a half seconds in 13 minutes to get second place. So it's looking pretty decent at the moment for Gerhard Travalza. And he is busy flashing the lights at the traffic. There he is. So the next target is going to be 77, Nico Eskilinen. You're riding with Travalza now as he threads his way out of Village. Burst of acceleration up towards the loop. In the first sector of this lap, Travalza was over a second quicker than Eskilinen. So he's absolutely hacking into that margin. 4.2 seconds back he was, but it won't be long before he's up with the fin. Runs a little bit wide onto the kerb there, but not too wide, so it's a track limits issue. 12 minutes of the race remain. Gerhard Travalza comes down now towards Brooklands. The car that he's chasing is the Mad Croc sponsored Mikko Eskilinen car. There is Travalza. There is Eskilinen. This is the fight for third overall and for the Pro Am class lead. So it's a significant fight, this. There are two things to be gained by Travalza in this third overall and the class lead in Pro Am. On board with him now, coming through Woodcut. He was four and a half seconds back. He's half a second back now. The place he's going to change on this lap. So Gerhard Travalza comes through Cops Corner, inching up onto the back of Mikko Eskilinen. Through the back, it's Essie's nose to tail. And Travalza's going to have to back out of this. He's got so much more speed than Eskilinen is in danger of clipping the back of the fins. Car, now he looks to the inside. He's done it, has he? Not quite. Mikko Eskilinen stands his ground on the outside. Gerhard Travalza lets discretion be the better part of Valor, but that was close. But you can see how much more speed he's got. Gerhard Travalza will be third before much longer. Will he challenge at Stoke Corner? They head down to the end of the hangar straight. Yes, he goes for the inside line. Through he goes. The Austrian moves ahead of the fin. Gerhard Travalza goes through for third place. Right, next target, number 11, Roberto Tanker, who is three seconds, three and a half seconds up the road. And Travalza is lapping at the same kind of pace in the sectors. So let's see what he can do. He should be good for second place before the end, especially now with clear road ahead. He can get his head down, pound on, try and catch those further up the road. Now heading towards the right-hander of Abbey goes Gerhard Travalza. A win is out of the question because he's lapping at the same sort of pace as Jeroen Mull, not quicker than Jeroen Mull. But again, you see what I meant early on in the race when I talked about the difference between the, the pro now being somebody you can aspire to equal and to beat. Travalza is lapping half a second quicker than the, uh, sorry, half a second uh, slower than the race leader, your own Mull. So this is one of the top pro-am drivers, only half a second shy of one of the pro drivers. It means that having the pro drivers in these days raise the level, but you are still able to aspire to be them and you can run at the same kind of pace. And Travalza is doing a good job of doing just that. It's not that far shy of your own Mull on that previous lap. Mull, in fairness, just upping his pace a bit now. Trying to extend the advantage. Now, Roberto Tanker, number 11, is the next target for this man, Gerhard Travalza, who runs in third place. Now, we have news from the pit lane. Let's rejoin Jack Nichols. Gottfried, uh, Gerhard's looking pretty strong in this second stint, isn't he? Yeah, it's really great driving performance, but I have to say also to Sandro Pickel, his first stint was amazing, you know, he did the quick 
on his uh, on his whole weekend. It was really incredible performance, and Gerhard is now pushing for P2. Do you yeah. think he'll be able to get it? Yes, he will be able. He's quicker than him, can turn Tanka, so we can do P2. Hopefully, cross fingers that he will do it. <laughs> Thank you very much. No problem. Thanks. <laughs> So the question, can Gerhard Trabalza get second place? Hopefully he can do it. Well, I think he will. He is currently 1.7 seconds back from Roberto Tanker, and he's got nine minutes in which to do it. In fact, he's almost on the back of Tanker now. So having taken two seconds out in the first sector alone, the change is imminent, isn't it, at the end of Vale? Is it going to happen here? Let's see. Roberto Tanker is almost a sitting duck now. The two cars swing their way up towards Abbey. And Travalza being held up a little bit at the moment as he makes his way past the wing. Roberto Tanka is the man in second spot. Number 11 is Tanka. 25 is Travalza right on his tail. This is the move for second place. Gerhard Travalza already leads Pro-Am. He wants second place overall. Looks for the inside line. There's a gap. A bit half-hearted, that. Maybe if that were the last lap of the race, Travalza would have forced the issue. But he's on the wrong line for the approach to the loop. Can he cut across and get the inside for entry? The answer is no, but he knows that he's got eight minutes. He won't catch the race leader, so second place is the target, and he's got the speed and he's got the time left in the race to gain that position. Down to Brooklands, up the inside, through goes Travalza. He's done it, he's taken second place away. Gerhard Travalza goes second, and that is a very good run indeed. Sandro Bickel brought the car in early in the window to give way to Travalza, and through he has gone to the delight of the team. So the Austrian is up into second spot now. Just wonder what the margin is to your own Mull. He goes over the line now, does Travaza. No, he's half a minute back. He ain't going to do anything more than that, is he? But second place for Travaza is very good indeed. Team really chuffed about this. <laughs> Even the Motorbase Blanc Pan team, whose garage they are standing in, are getting involved in it as well and cheering on Travaza by the look of it. So he's working his way through traffic. Now, if your own Mull were to have a problem, then Travaza could be on for an even better result here, couldn't he? Roberto Tanker, in the meantime, has been caught now by Giovanni Venturini. So this battle is for third place. There's Venturini fourth. Ahead of him is Tanker, who is in third spot. And that's going to change at the end of the hangar straight because they're absolutely nose to tail coming down towards Stoke Corner. Giovanni Venturini to the inside line. Well, we don't see the shot, but he's going to make the move, I think, as they head to the end of the hangar straight. own Mull, in the meantime, coming up towards Village. He's way out on his own. That's the easy part of the race. But are we going to have had that change for third? Will Venturini have gone by and got ahead of Tanker is the question. Travaza running in second spot, and that will be where he finishes, I think. Barring a disaster in six and a half more minutes for this man, your own Mull. Now, you can see the gap, absolutely nobody else in sight. So, working his way onto the back of the traffic is your own Mull. That's what's keeping him awake now, doing some lappery. Travaza running second, Tanker or Venturini now third, given the way they were so, so close when we last saw. Then Pavlovich up to fifth. No more news about any penalties coming, uh, even though the team manager had to go to race control. That's information ended there, I think. So we've not been told of any penalty heading for Pavlovich. And the investigation between uh, the stewards about the contact on the first lap also seems to have gone nowhere. So all is good seemingly to run to the end of the race. The leader has gone through. Five and three-quarter minutes remain. And here, heading down towards Brooklands, is another change of place because that's Pavlovich getting himself up past Roberto Tanker. So Venturini has gone through, and now Pavlovich goes through as well. So third is Venturini, fourth is Pavlovich, and Roberto Tanker drops back into fifth place. So good a job as he's doing. He just is not as fast as those around him. And Andrea Amici frustrated, I think, but yet again, his ultimate finishing position is going to be compromised by having a slower co-driver. The order is your own mull from Gerhard Travaza, from Venturini, Pavlovich, Tanka, Eskilinen is sixth, Ciccato is seventh, eighth there is Alberto Di Falco, ninth behind him is Alberto, Vibe Alberto Viberti, and tenth is the very anonymous Andrea Palma. Still convinced it's all a legacy of the contact on the first lap, but Palma's car has never looked that quick in this race. All a bit mysterious. He's nearly a minute behind the opposition. And he didn't exactly lose that much time in the slide, did he? Because it was a big moment that he held and carried on down through Vale, lost only a couple of places. Your own Mull, utterly dominant though. He has not been headed, has he? 
apart from on the pit stops where you expect things to shuffle a little bit that's the only time he's lost his lead and as he comes now he's going to get two more laps out of the race out of Aintree corner he will come in a moment and onto Wellington straight but the Dutchman absolutely charging and looking very impressive indeed turning now through the left hander at Brooklands up towards the right at Luffield and the cars heading towards the end of round four of the championship we're into the last four minutes it's going to be time for two more laps for the race leader your own mill he comes over the timing line now to put 21 laps in the book and he's on his own because Gerhard Travazza is a long long way back good drive by Travazza to get second place but Ferraza leading his class now by a massive margin because the second place car in Pro-Am, Mikko Eskilinen and Dimitri Ongerber is a long way back and third is Alberto Di Folco. Pellegrinelli still leads the AMs ahead of Abkazava and then Vincenzo Sauto now, the dentist in the bright yellow car, third in the class. down to Cops Corner goes Giovanni Venturini he in turn is being caught by Pavlovich nine tenths of a second so this is for the last place on the podium we've just had a change for sixth as well because uh, Ciccato number six has got himself up past Alberto Di Folco six and seventh and a reversal but for third place Giovanni Venturini versus Milos Pavlovich these were the cars that finished second yesterday Pavlovich third yesterday Venturini and in fact, they're not that far behind Gerhard Veraza. If they can up the pace a little bit, there's a chance of closing on him and attacking before the very end, but it's a slim chance. Down to the end of Hangar Straight they come. Number three is Pavlovich, and in the first sector he is quicker than Venturini. He might be able to catch him, but I'm not convinced that passing the Italian is going to be all that easy. They are both new to the championship this year, although Pavlovich did do the two races at Monza, so he's slightly ahead on experience of the car coming now through the right-hander at club way wide goes Pavlovich over the curb back on again and number three which is Milos Pavlovich in the middle sector of this lap looks as though he's been pretty much matching the pace of Venturini but this has been a mighty drive by your own mull absolutely blitz the opposition he will come through to start the last lap now there's less than a lap time left in the race but he is over half a minute ahead and that goes to show just how good a stint he did early on to build that advantage and even though some cars have got quick co-drivers in now they lost so much time in the first stint there's just no touching him so your own mull now i think has positioned himself as the man to beat especially as a soloist the car will run at this pace race long next stop paul ricard then Spa, then Nürburgring, and then Sepang before the end of the season. And is that where we talk about your own Müller as the champion? Gerhard Verasa. This is the man in second place. This is not yet a car crossing the line to start the last lap. It does so now. That gives you an idea of how far back he is. 32 and a half seconds. Venturini is 1.7 seconds back and 7 tenths back is this man, Milos Pavlovich. So second, third and fourth are all concertinaing up on this last lap of the race. cars now swing their way through the Beckett's S's for the last time I think Veraza has got enough in hand to be able to hang on to this second place but Venturini is certainly under attack because Pavlovich is inching up onto the back of him Milos Pavlovich who was second yesterday after the Piscopo spin determined to try to get onto the podium here he's getting a little bit closer again as they work their way down towards Stoke Corner into the right hander they come your own Mull is on target for a second win of the weekend. Milos Pavlovich, though, could yet get third place before the very end of the race. There is Mull working his way now up towards the left-hander at the loop. Behind him is the lapped car in the hands now of Vincenzo Sauto, who is on target for third place within the Pro-Am category. But for the race leader, your own Mull, it's been the dream weekend at Silverstone, hasn't it? pole position for this race fastest lap as well in a race win will be his second win of the weekend for third place Venturini just being able to peg this gap over the hard charging Milos Pavlovich behind him but as the cars work their way now through Luffield for the last time your own Mull 
absolutely crushes the opposition at Silverstone. Two races, two wins for your own mill. Check a flag at the ready. Your own mill wins round four of the Lamborghini Blancpain Super Trofeo. And he does so in style. A flash of the lights as he comes over the timing line. Your own mill has done it. Veraza, then Venturini, then Pavlovic, second, third, and fourth as they work their way down through Brooklands. Pavlovic is still trying to attack Venturini. There's no gap on the inside. There's no gap on the outside. He needs to try to swing across to the inside line if he can, coming up to the line. And all of that enables Veraza to get away. So. Veraza and Bickel take second and honours in Pro-Am and a delighted Veraza comes over the line ahead of Venturini for third and then Pavlovich fourth and Veraza's weaving as he celebrates over the line may not go down a storm with the clerk of the course for fifth place coming through now is Alberto Di Folco who gets ahead of Roberto Tanker on the last lap as also does Andrea Ciccato so Tanker ends up seventh 49 seconds behind the leader Bearing in mind that Andrea Amici was about two seconds away from the leader in his stint. It goes to show the differing pace of the two drivers in that car. Eighth over the line, Mikko Eskilinen. Ninth, Alberto Viberti. And tenth is Andrea, pa Andrea Palma in 27. Uh, this is Simone Pellegrinelli, who is on target for 11th place. And more importantly, a win in the AM class. He comes through now victorious once more in the AM category. Simone Pellegrinelli is well over a minute back from the race winner outright but it's a fourth class win in a row for Pellegrinelli second in the class should be Shrata Abkazava and we have had a change on the last lap because Jake Rattenbury has got up to third in the AMS at the expense of Vincenzo Sauto no argument about the race winner your own mill is victorious he wins the pro class from Giovanni Venturini, and then third, Milos Pavlovic and Eduardo Piscopo. The Pro-Ams won by this man, second overall, Gerhard Traza and Sandra Bickel from Alberto Di Folco, and then Mikko Eskilinen and Dimitri Angelbert finish in third place. But a very good drive by Traza that to work his way from fourth to second. And it was all done on speed. There was no lucking into it. It was done properly. So a great job done by the Austrian, great job done by this man. Your own Mull, dominant right through the race. So as the cars work their way on this slowing down lap, back to the pit lane. We will have a chance to hear from the drivers in a few moments, as soon as Jerome Mull arrives back. And he is, as I say, put himself down as being the man to beat in the championship this year. Confirmation of the results. Your own Mull, the race winner from Gerhard Travaza and Sandra Bickel. Second, Giovanni Venturini takes third. First weekend in the championship, don't forget, ahead of Piscopo and Pavlovic. De Folco fifth, and Cerqui and Giacato sixth. Tanker and Amici drop to seventh in the end, ahead of Eskilinen and Angelbert. Viberti ninth and then Palmer in 10th. Looking lower down the order in 11th, Pellegrinelli to win his class with Shota Abkazava and Jan Van Oitzel, Jake Rattenbury to join him on the podium. But we lost some of the interesting cars early on in that race, like Matteo Zucchi, like also Cedric Lima, depriving us the chance to see how Jonathan Cochet would have gone. So you can see as the cars arrive at Park Ferme, I have the different flashes on the windscreen to explain what class they are. And Pro doesn't really do your own bull justice this weekend. Out of the car he gets. Two out of two. He is over the moon. And understandably, Dutchman and the Automobile and Lamborghini Racing Team Germany entry scores victory. Delighted team, delighted man. The Dutchman for the German team celebrates the win. And your own bull, who came out of single seater racing initially, raced in as high a level as Formula 3, then switched to the Carrera Cup. Takes off his helmet, takes off the balaclava. At the moment, that will come. The earplugs, gloves off, hands device. It's a long process, this. And your own will, a very happy man indeed. What a weekend. So let's grab a word with him. Jack Nichols is there for us. Your own, congratulations. Uh, much easier than yesterday, by the looks of it. 
Yeah, well, I had some uh, some clean air in front of me now. Uh, but, um, with the start, um, uh, the guy next to me, Amici, was uh, was oh, no, it was the Benaldi car. It was quite quick on the start, but uh, luckily I had the profit of the inside, so uh, I could stay uh, stay in the lead. After that, the guys behind me got into a little bit of a fight, and Amici was quite quickly behind me, and he was quite fast as well. But uh, fortunately, I uh, was able to pull a little bit of a gap. And then, um, yeah, we'll stay in front of me, in front of him with, uh, until the pit stops. And I knew that his teammate is a little bit slower. So after the pit stops, it was just uh, getting into a rhythm and smooth sailing after that. Brilliant. And looking forward, that must give you good confidence going on now to uh, to Paul Ricard. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's, uh, it's kind of a similar track there. So and I really like this this fast, flowy bit with a lot of downforce and really making use of the grip, uh, grip of the Lamborghini. So uh, looking forward to that. Brilliant. Congratulations on your victory. So your own will be heading up to the podium in a, in a few moments' time. Let's have a quick word with the uh, team manager of uh, Rasa Racing, Gottfried. Uh, we'll, we'll have a little word with Gerhard in a moment, but a, a great race for you guys. Yeah, great race in uh, set uh, before. You know, it's a great week uh, in England, you know, after Brent Setch with the double win. Here today, second from P11, because yesterday was really not good, but today everything changed and it's racing. Very happy. Brilliant. Congratulations. And let's get, uh, well, Gerhard has actually just been thrown away. We'll just chase him over here. Gerhard, great race for you. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I pushed really a lot. Piquel did a really good job at the first 20 minutes. The start was really good. Uh, the car was quite good, also with the used tires. And yeah, that's it. I pushed and the second place is the end result. Brilliant. Congratulations. And let's actually uh, see if we can grab Milos Pavlovich, who's just gone down here. No, he's heading off Milos Pavlovich, so we'll uh, we'll have to... Oh, here he comes. He was so close to grabbing that podium. Milos, let's have a quick word. So close at the end there to, uh, to grabbing a podium. Well, yeah, it's a shame. I lost a little bit of time with, uh, with lapping some cars, and he got him a little bit better. Yeah, if there was only one more lap, I would have done it because I felt great in the car and everything was working perfect. So it's a shame, but still, after what happened in the first lap, it's good to be on the podium. Yeah, because Eduardo got a brilliant start, didn't he? And looked like he might be able to take the lead. Yeah, he, he went for it and unfortunately just found himself in the wrong place at the wrong moment. You know, something that you cannot predict. And they pushed him out. He lost some places, then he got hit by Palma, I think. So he spun and then, you know, that was it. He had to recover. Excellent. Well, congratulations anyway. Best of luck, Milos. So uh, they will uh, head up to the podium in a few moments' time. And, uh, well, that's pretty much all of them done from down here. So I think we'll head back up to David Addison. So good to hear from the drivers and a great job done by Jerome Mull. Thanks, Jack, for all of that. And Jerome Mull's winning margin over half a minute in the end, 32.8 seconds over Gerhard Javaza, who did a very good job indeed in the Pro-Am winning car. The drivers will go to the podium. Three podium ceremonies as normal with the AMs going first. And that means that once more Simone Pellegrinelli will head to the top step of the podium unbeaten in the AM category. Can this 100% record continue? He has certainly made the class his own thus far this year. And maybe although the race didn't have at the front the high drama of yesterday, uh, some great drives offered up by a number of the drivers in the championship, many of whom are new to the series this year. So I think the drivers are all being rounded up, all of course in their identical uniform liveries. And as soon as we have the drivers that we need, then so they will be brought forward. First of all, for the third place in the AM class, Jake Rattenbury and Jan van Oetzel. For second place onto the AM podium, comes Shota Abkazava. And for the top step of the podium once more, Simone Pellegrinelli. And now the anthem for Simone Pellegrinelli. So Jake Rattenbury's on his own. There's no Jan van Oetzel, I notice. But anyway, Jake is there. And he, in a moment, will receive his trophy. The teams he's all represented there as well. 
and their the bronze trophy presented by Maurizio Reggiani who is the R&D director for Automobili Lamborghini it goes to Dick Rattenbury Shota Abkazava receives his trophy for second spot and then the man on the top yet again to Meli Pellegrinelli for an am he's done a lot of winning this year he's a very impressive driver indeed and he also gets the Blancpain clock that goes with such a good weekend here then the Pirelli trophy is given to him as well. An embarrassment of riches for Semeni Pellegrinelli. So four out of four for him. And in fairness to Shota Abkazava, he is regularly now the best of the rest. It surely can't be too long before Abkazava is able to start thinking about threatening for a race victory. The Russian driver there on the left of the podium as you look. Jake Rattenbury, the young British driver, is there on the right. Just starting to wonder now whether or not he did the entire race on his own. I'm surprised that Jan van Oitzel hasn't gone to the podium to, as well to celebrate a podium finish unless he's had to leave Silverstone early for some reason. So Jake Rattenbury sprays the champagne, Semele <laughs> Pellegrinelli sprays it all over himself, waste not what not, and a very happy man he is indeed. So the drivers will make their way from the podium, that will be made ready for the Pro-Ams to venture out. And there are the trophies being brought out. The champagne is there. And the Pro-Am category for third place, having run strongly early on, uh, was Dimitri Angelbert and Mikko Eskilinen. And going much better than at Monza, where in both races they were blighted with punctures, but uh, having a much better run at Silverstone. So Mikko Eskilinen and Dimitri Angelbert should venture out for third place. They do indeed come forward for third position. The Finn and the Frenchman, Mikko Eskilinen, there's Dimitri Angelbert behind him. Second, Alberto Di Folco, so the Italian for the Autocarazzeri Imperiali team steps forward. And then the top step of the Pro-Am podium for the GRT team, an excellent drive of this by Gerhard Barraza and Sandro Bickel. And for GRT, Barraza Racing, the national anthem. Racing team then, the Austrian National Anthem is played, uh, respected, and now trophies will be given to the drivers as well, because after a great effort, Francesco Scaglioni, the head of parts and accessories for Lamborghini, hands the trophy to Dimitri Angelbert and to Mikko Eskilinen, who is no stranger to GT Racing. Therefore, second place is Alberto Di Folco and Sandro Bichel and... Gerhard Verraza, the two Austrians on the top of the podium, receive the gold trophies. And there's also the Blancpain clock as well to be given. Handshakes all round. And then the Pirelli trophy to the class winners. Pirelli, very enthusiastic supporters of this, although we mentioned Blancpain as the title sponsor of the series. Uh, Pirelli put a huge amount of effort in and looks after the competitive base very well. And of course, Pirelli also the rubber on which the Blancpain Endurance Series cars run. Trophies in the air for photos. And then I think the drivers will all huddle together for photographs. And the podium will be made ready for the pro drivers. First of all, though, there is the champagne to be sprayed. And one or two, not quite so quick with the cork and the bottle here, but we get there in the end. So a lot of delight from Bikel and Ferraza. Very good drive by both. And to be second overall ahead of a number of the pro teams is a very, very impressive effort indeed. That kind of wonder whether they need to be recategorised perhaps before the end of the season. But it was a very, very good effort indeed. Mikko Eskilinen pleased with a podium finish. Congratulates everybody. Gets his photo taken and now makes his way off the podium. And that's going to be made ready for Eduardo Piscopo and Milos Pavlovic for third in the Pro Cup for... Giovanni Venturini for second, and then your own Mull yet again this weekend at Silverstone as a winner. 
So there is Silverstone under a puffy white cloud sky. Thankfully, no dark rain laden clouds like we had yesterday. There is a, 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 the thought that there might be the odd shower this afternoon. It might just spice up the Blanc Pan Endurance Series race a little more, but I think that's probably going to miss Silverstone that rain. And the marshals, particularly, who got very bedraggled yesterday, can go all afternoon in the dry. Thank heavens for that. Out onto the podium come the drivers for the Pro Cup podium. For third place, Milos Pavlovic and Eduardo Piscopo. For second place, Giovanni Venturini. And there, your own Mull is a very happy race winner. Celebrates with a handshake with everybody. And for him, the national anthem. So your own Mull takes a second win of the weekend, the second win of the season, his debut season in the Lamborghini Blanc Pound Super Trofeo. And a cracking job done. Not a wheel wrong in either race. Roberto Vaglietti, who is the series coordinator, steps forward to hand over the trophies to Milos Pavlovic on the left, the slightly taller of the two, alongside Edo Piscopo. There, Giovanni Venturini for second place. Not a bad debut in the championship, that. And your own Mull takes the gold trophy as the race winner. Very happy man he is too as he celebrates. And the drivers then will get together for photographs in a moment after the Pirelli trophy has been awarded. And trophies in the air for photographs and the champagne is at the driver's feet and that I think is going to be liberally sprayed. So trophies, clocks, and champagne. This is a full podium, and your own Mull, if he does get drenched now, I don't think we'll mind. It has been the dream weekend for him. He does get drenched. Edo Piscopo lets rip. Moderately subdued spraying of the champagne, that, although Edo Piscopo gives Giovanni Venturini <laughs> a fair amount of it. And rather than spray, there's a shower for yourself. Your own Mull soaks himself in the champagne and is a very, very happy race winner, and understandably so. But if he can come out on top of an entry that has got good single-seater drivers in it, like Piscopo and Pavlovich sharing a car, then I think he's uh, certainly marked himself out as a potential champion. He's benefiting a little bit from some of the others that are shared entries, like Amici and Tanker just not having the overall pace for the whole 50 minutes. But the way that Muller's been going is very impressive indeed, especially in his rookie season. So the second race done and dusted at Silverstone. Next stop will be Paul Ricard for the Lamborghini Blancpain Super Trofeo teams. And from there to Spa, then to the Nürburgring, and the season ends at Sepang, where there is the last round of the European and then the world final all over the same weekend. But from Silverstone, your own Mull has been a very, very impressive driver indeed. Class win for Simone Pellegrinelli just continues to reinforce his dominance of the AM class. And nobody at the moment looking likely to challenge him, and nor is he looking in jeopardy. He doesn't make mistakes. You never get this feeling that it could all go wrong at any moment. Far from it. Pellegrinelli looking very, very strong indeed this season. And he's going to be the man to beat, I think, over the remainder of the year. And in the Pro AMs, that's where all the shuffling comes, with Travazza and Bacal taking that victory over Di Folco. And then for the third place in the class, Mikko Eskilinen and Dimitri Anjabe. Good to see them up at the pointy end of the class as well. Another good drives in that race, coming from the likes of Alberto Cerqui. But I'm still mystified about Andrea Palmer. Big disappointment, that. So Palmer, who should have had the speed, should have had the pace, was disappointing. And that's a car, I think, that 
did suffer damage in that little clash. But you saw the way that Pavlovich and Piscopo worked and got it back up the order. Andrea Palmer never looked quick enough. So here at Silverstone, the fans making their way down the pit lane now for the uh, pit walk in advance of the Blancpain Endurance Series race. Let's look at some of the highlights of the Lamborghini Blancpain Super Trofeo that began with your own mull, snatching the lead on the inside, going into Cop's corner with a hard-charging Andrea Amici behind him. Palmer made a move against Piscopo, the slightest of touches. Piscopo lucky not to get collected. Palmer got away with it seemingly, but then fell down the order and never really recovered his pace. There was a spin from DeFolco coming through Village. There was contact as Lima got involved with Andros Josefsson going into Cop's corner and that put the Swede into the gravel. Another spin came. Alberto Di Berti had this drama down at club corner. And Lima's damaged car limped as far as Beckett to retired on the spot. Things were looking good though for the Grassa Racing team. Things were looking good also for your own Bull as he continued to lead and extended that lead as the stint wore on. Ball drama coming out of Beckett's. Joshi Bori had his accident and went across the road, and then a big spin at the other end of Bale for Shota Akazava. Pit window opened. Your own will temporarily lost the lead to Andrea Amici, but Roberto Tanka wasn't able to keep the car up front, and the car dropped back to seventh overall at the end of the race. Your own will, therefore, continued to dominate, and his advantage of over half a minute was an impressive one come race's end. Andrea Palmer was continuing to lose places. He lost out against Alberto Viberto. And then Sandro Bickel and Gerhard Trevasa worked their way up into second place and with it the lead in the Pro-Am category. For your own mull, there was just no stopping him. He came through to take the chequered flag and to score victory in round four of the championship. A great weekend he has had, some good racing at Silverstone. Next stop, Paul Ricard. From Jack Nichols and David Addison for now, bye-bye.